Hey guys, it's Lina van der Velde and this is the final whistle. Hello oh, and welcome back to the final whistle brought to you by the Rugby Connection podcast. Well, we're back at Sandy Park, but it is another first for the podcast. It's our first Dutch international player, so we might as well go for the captain of the Dutch team. It's Linda van der Helden. Linda, thank you so much for coming on. How are you getting on? Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> thank you. Good. And like I said, you are our first Dutch international player, so another first for the pod. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we ask our first guest, we ask our guest the first question, all the same. It's what actually got you into rugby in the first place? Um, well, I used to be a horse rider for a very long time, like uh, eight and a half, nine years. And then I just wanted to do a team sport. And uh, my dad always played rugby. And at the time, my sister just started. So, um, yeah, I just joined her. So I actually started quite late. I only started playing rugby when I was like uh, turning 18. So, uh, yeah, quite late change uh, to very different sports. <laughs> very, very different sports. So you took up weight, you've played sevens for, for your national team, you've captained the 15s, you were Exeter Chiefs first captain, you were the first person to score for Exeter Chiefs in the Premier 15. You've done it all in a very short <laughs> period of time. Yeah, that when you not when you say it like that, that's uh <laughs> that's definitely uh interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know, it just went it went that way quite naturally. I mean I started playing rugby just because I I wanted to be in a team environment again. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just enjoyed it so much. I never started with the idea to like achieve all these goals, to be honest. But they just came on my path. And I think it's just because I enjoyed it so much. It Yeah, it made it possible. And uh, I mean, it definitely wasn't easy. Don't get me wrong. But like, uh, yeah, it was a great journey so far, to be honest. Oh, I bet. It, it, does, it does sound amazing. And I already know that there's definitely more to come. <laughs> it's going to sound daft because they are very different sports, but is there any crossover skills from horse riding to, to rugby? I know that sounds really stupid, but... Really <laughs> um, to be honest, I actually have no idea. So far, I don't think so. Um, I think, like, yeah, I don't know. Um, I did jumping for a bit, uh I just enjoyed being like focusing on a goal and like focusing on the game so I guess like maybe that comes back into it but it's very quite individual sport like we had quite a small stable so it was still sort of like that family environment that uh I really enjoyed to work in so that was great and that made me like want to come there always and we had quite a close group with the girls that we uh, had the lesson with but in the end like I said it was more of like an individual thing and yeah, yeah I was uh craving a uh, team environment again so uh, that's why I went uh, to the local club. <laughs> I love that and um, obviously like, it's not massive well to our knowledge rugby is not massive over in the Netherlands. Talk to us about the growth of the sport and what the next step is. For yeah over there. yeah I mean, definitely, if you compare it to other countries, obviously, like uh, with us, more people play soccer or hockey is a very big thing. Handball's becoming quite big as well. But rugby is a very small sport at the moment. A lot of times uh, it's actually bigger than people think. Like in the Netherlands, we actually have like three competition leagues for the girls and for men, it's actually a lot bigger. And we have a lot of people that come from abroad and actually... Uh, like another, I think getting paid to play is a starting point at the moment. The boys qualified uh, for the highest league in Europe. I think it was last year. Uh, so that's like underneath Six Nations because we played a European competition. So that is great. Um, I think for girls, there's a big step for us to make. Is The problem we have is that um, we don't really have that many girls playing rugby so at the moment we don't have a girls competition so girls actually play with the boys till the age of 16 and then they'll start going with the girls and they're not allowed to play front row until they're like 18 um so you see a lot of girls that stop playing between the age of 12 and uh, 16 because well a male body obviously um transfers a bit quicker than a uh a, a women or girls does so you just notice that 
um, certain positions they can't play or certain competitions, the highest competition, they just don't really get any game time. So I think that's a step where we can uh, hopefully make a big growth because that will help more girls to play rugby. But um, after COVID, we've been struggling in the Netherlands to get girls um, or to keep girls at clubs, which made for international or girls that played for the Netherlands the step to play abroad, um, which is very good, of course, but more. So we lost a lot of girls in that sense as well. So I think the first step would be, yeah, to, to uh, how do you say that, introduce the girls uh, in schools and in high schools more to rugby and that that has been a massive improvement already so we're hoping that we can uh, see like um, how do you say that see the change from that and then we have a lot more girls in uh, the academies now the academy system has a great setup uh, that also has been a big growth in the last five to ten years so it also takes time of course but uh, we see a massive growth in that and we're hoping now that uh, we're building back from it from uh, after COVID, also with the senior competition. Yeah, finger, fingers crossed that is definitely on the up. And like I always say, just pay the girls, pay the guys as well, pay everyone. You know, <laughs> just go for it. Yeah, I like, I like to see more teams, and I really want one of the bright orange jerseys that you wear. I don't know where to get them. <laughs> but I, I love them. I've seen pictures and I've seen uh, some clips, and I'm like. I need that top. I don't know where I'm going to get it or how I'm going to get it, but I'm going to get it. Yeah, it is a great jersey. Yes, yeah. Very proud to be able to wear it, 100%. I love that. And I mean, like, there is only two, like, household names from from uh, Dutch rugby, and it's it's yourself and, and Tim Visser, really. That's the only two big ones. We need more. We need more Dutch players, because if it's just based off you two, very high standards <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are definitely a few upcoming and especially boys like there's a guy that played at my local club in Kostikum. uh he's actually in new zealand now and he plays for all blacks on their 20s so oh, wow. there are definite and we have a few boys that play in the french competition uh one a dutch girl that actually played for france at the world cup so there are definitely a few uh, dutch talents they are just quite unknown <laughs> Just give them more more focus. That's all we need. Um, I'm glad you mentioned France, actually, because you have played in France as well. You were at Toulouse. What's the biggest difference between playing in France to playing in England with the Premier 15s? Um, I think, well, it's. I already find it, uh, it's quite difficult to compare because that was my first step to like um, a broad rugby. So I would say if I look at myself now as at the time I was there, um, I'm definitely in a different uh, uh, side of my career, so I was quite uh, new to everything there. Uh, a big step was the language, like I get French in high school and I think I was a bit unprepared and thinking that because I can order a croissant and book a table, I speak French, which clearly was not the case when I when I moved there. So that was a very uh, difficult thing because um, they don't just speak French in normal life. They also speak French on the pitch and like all the calls are in French, the referees speak French. So yeah, and they don't speak English. I expected that people, my mom's, my, my parents' age would only speak French and my age, they would also speak English. Uh, that's not the case. So that uh, for me, that was quite difficult to, because I mean, communication is just also important on the field. And I think it also brings like confidence in how you play and that you understand the game plan or sort of what is expected from you. So I guess that being new to them, don't understand the language, sort of like made my playing style a bit less confident as well. Um, uh, it was a big step up from the Netherlands to there, but I think if I compare it um, to here, I would say the contact is definitely a bit heavier here. Um, I would say it's more of a quicking play uh, in France and they rather like have almost no rocks and wanted to like just play really quick rugby. Whilst here, I would say the collisions are definitely a bit heavier and the forward packs are just also a bit bigger. So I guess that that's a bit more of a play as well. But um, yeah, I feel I'm very happy that I made that decision to go there because uh, it uh, has definitely has an impact on my career. And I only only learned from it. Like I definitely didn't play as much as I wanted. 
Uh, I think I only played two games for the first team. I was there for nine months and then COVID happened. So I moved back to the Netherlands, but they have like a foreign rule. So you're only allowed to play two foreigners per game. Uh, wow. We were with five foreigners. So it was always quite difficult to make the team. But at the time they just had like better players than um, I guess than I was. So I had, I was very fortunate to train with like the back row of France and stuff like that. Uh, three nights a week but it's quite difficult when you come somewhere and you want to play and you don't get the game time like you hope for mm -hmm. so but I think it was also good for me because it just made me realize that yeah things are not like uh, handed to you and you have to work really hard and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't because I was there for nine months I played two games for the first team then I was very uh, I found it did the move to England very difficult because I thought that might even be more difficult than I'm already not playing here. So why would I move? Yeah. But just because like, it was also for my other, like my career next to rugby, a better step. That's why I made the decision. And then uh, they asked me to become captain and I, I played almost every game for chief. So like it, yeah, I feel like you just have to keep on working and then in the end it will pay off and it might not be easy, but yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I love yeah. that hard work pays off. and. The fact that you're just there, captaincy. Hey, welcome to XR. You're our captain. I love that. Yeah, yeah that's not how it went. <laughs> it was <laughs> like uh, we did the whole preseason. I also did not really ex expect it. There was never a conversation before that. So, like, I I played in Toulouse with Holly Myers. She's a referee now, used to play for Harlequins. Yeah. And um, we played together at uh, Stade Toulouse. And she told me, you need to go to England, but they're setting up this program at Exeter Chiefs. I think you would fit in really well. And this is her email address. So I just sent Susie an email and then they played this um, test game in Newcastle. It was like, I think the first ever game the Chiefs women's played. And I flew over to play that game just to show myself and hopefully get a contract. And even then it was more, they offered me a contract and, um, I just came over for preseason and we trained a lot, very hard in in COVID time. And then, yeah, at some point they asked me the question. And at first I was like, I don't know if I, should I do this like in a different language? And I don't know any of these girls yet, but I don't know. At the time it, it just felt right. And it was a, a good feeling. And I'm really happy I made the decision because I also learned a lot from it um, as a person, but also as a captain for my national team. So, uh, yeah. It was a great, uh, again, part of my journey, yeah. You just ooze leadership. That's all it is. You just have that leadership aura around you. So there you go. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned your other crew because I did do a little bit of digging. You're also an architect. Yes. That's, that's crazy. How do you balance architecture and, and rugby? <laughs> well, I am an assistant architect. Like, I, if I want to become a fully qualified architect, I still have, like uh two more years left but um uh yeah I did a bit of a different path to becoming an architect I didn't know at the start uh, that I that's what I wanted so I actually did two different types of studies in the Netherlands but um yeah I always combined a full-time study with playing for the Netherlands and then my local club and then my last year of my study I actually did abroad so that's when I was in France so I did Stade Toulouse and uh, I worked or did like a French internship and um, I was graduating at the same time sort of from home in my apartment in France. And um, yeah, that's how I, I ended up getting my degree. And when I moved here, I just think like I love playing rugby and, I, and for me that is, is my number one focus at the moment. But I also know that at, at some point this this is going to stop and I rather have um, experience in what I want to do next. And I personally um, really like the fact that like one or two days a week, I can switch off and focus on something else rather than always staying focused on rugby. So that was part of my contract that uh, I told Susie um, that I love to come, but that like, uh, I mean, we, we get a bit, we get a pay here at Chiefs, but it is good to have an extra job next to it to be able to survive sort of, or be able to do nice 
things like go home and see my family and stuff. So that's what I said that like I wanted two days a week to work at an architect and they, um, yeah, they connected with PMR architecture in Newton Abbott. And um, I actually uh, have been working there since uh, I moved to uh, Exeter. So I've already been there for over two years now. Yeah, it's great. I hope this. Some some achievement is just showing off now, though. I, have got, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we have got some dirt on you from a teammate of yours. Oh, God. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what it is first, and then you have to guess who told me about it. So I have to ask you about your favourite song to sing on the bus, and you've also to perform the movements. To <laughs> song on the bus. Oh, I don't know who this is because this could be all of my teammates because they make <laughs> me do this every time we have a bus trip home. But um, yeah, so we have this tradition with Chiefs that after uh, your first away game, you have to perform a song, uh, carry it, well, you have to sing a song basically on yeah. the bus back. And I don't know why, but I did something in a game which wasn't very smart, I think. And that's why I have to do it again, because this wasn't even my first song. And then I decided to do this Dutch song. It's called Toeter op mijn water scooter, which means like honk on my water scooter. And it has the movement that you honk honk on your scooter. And yeah, I sang that song on the bus and everybody <laughs> loved it so much that... Basically, every away trip now, I have to do perform a song. And it's actually this season at Chiefs, we all have a try scoring song. And I actually chose this song, but I haven't scored yet. But I'm, I am hoping that if that happens this season, the whole stands will do a performance of the, <laughs> of the movement. But yeah, <laughs> that is a story. <laughs> that's, that is amazing that's not what i expected at all and that makes it so much better do you want to just try and have one at least one guess at who stitched you up i don't know was it one of the americans it was one of the americans yes it was it gabby cantorna no it was oh you were so close i thought you were, I thought you were gonna get it was kate it was kate Zachary. Oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> i knew it was one of the americans <laughs> yeah, we have, we've had Kate on the show, so we always do it. If we get players that we've like from teams that we've already had on, we'll we'll message the, the previous guests like, "Have you got anything on <laughs> on such and such? Could you tell us something?" And then it's just a little fun game. So the next extra chief we get, you're getting a message, and you could stitch them up. Oh, nice. Okay, I'll be prepared. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, it was it was captain to captain there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I have got another question, though, just based on previous Chiefs that we had. Um, have you got anything to say about your teammates? So, like Kay, Zachary, and the the Wallaby that's coming in, Laurie Kramer. We've, had, we've got Laurie on as well. So, have you got anything to say about either of them? About, sorry, Kate or the new Australian that's coming? Yeah, we've got, we had uh, Laurie Kramer oh, yeah. on the show. So, I don't know if you've met her yet, but is there anything you'd like to say about Kate? Yeah, I know Kate. I know Kate very well. Uh, Laurie, I don't know yet. I haven't met her yet. Uh, I think they will be coming in like the next week or two weeks, because uh, everybody got like four weeks off uh, after their World Cup. But um, so yeah, yeah, I've seen her play, and uh, I'm very excited, obviously, for her to come over and uh, yeah, have a great season with us. I think she's going to be a great addition to this to the squad. Uh, Kate, yeah, Kate is great. Um, I think she's one of the the best players in the league, and uh, we're very fortunate to have her with us. And uh, you can learn from her a lot. And I think, yeah, she uh, is exactly like everybody at Chiefs always wants to perform and always wants to be the best on and off the pitch. And she's great fun. She sits with me and the other Americans at the back of the bus when we go uh, for away games, and. Uh, she loves the social after the game as well. So we are a lot together. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to mention about Kate to stitch her up and get, get revenge almost? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> oh, I don't really have any dirt on her at the moment. No, sorry. 
We'll save, we'll save it. We'll catch you off guard later on with it. <laughs> <laughs> when the recording ends. No. <laughs> exactly. Yes. You, you know the rules already. Um, do you prefer being in the second row or in the back row? Oh, well, I used to always say, like, I prefer being back row, but uh, I guess it was more because, like, I'm, I was more um, experienced in playing back row. So playing second row sometimes made me a bit insecure. But now I actually really enjoy it. Um, yeah, I I just want to be on the field, so that's that comes first. But uh, I actually don't mind playing second row that much. I feel like last season was one of the best season I I've had so far, and that was playing second row. So um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's difficult for my national team. Definitely playing eight. I think for Chiefs. Right now, I don't, I don't really mind. I think it also playing eight also brings another like uh, pressure with you because we have so many good players in the competition that you're under a lot of more pressure than, or maybe that I feel than when I'm with my national team. I don't feel that as much. No, if that, that makes sense. sense. <laughs> okay. No, the the reason I asked was, um, we ask all our guests this based on their positions. So because. We'll let you do both. You're the guest, so you can get both. What <laughs> is your dream second row partner? You get one past and one present, and same for the back row. You get get two from each side. Oh, so I can have um, a past and present sort of body second row or eight. Yeah. So if you're starting second row, you get who's joining you from the past and who's joining you from the present. You don't have to have played with them. It could just be someone you really, really like as well. Just to make it difficult. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm very difficult with making decisions. I would say, so, past, so from my local club, I my best friend, uh, Sophie Tauber, I would definitely pick her. She is such a workhorse. I would say, like, if I, she also can play second row, so that would be uh, back row or second row. And we always played together, went to the national team together, so... I would pick her because there were anything I would do on the field, no doubt she has my back. Yeah. Um, even if it's a very stupid decision, she will <laughs> still be there. Um, and I think for uh, present second row, I will pick Nicola Friday from Exeter Chiefs. She's also okay. my roommate and I feel like we connect really well on and off the pitch. So I would um, pick her. And do I need to pick a present back row as well? Or is this it? Yeah, present. Yeah, because there's two. There's, there's yeah. Two, so yeah, so yeah, you need a present or past back row as well. Uh, I would say a present back row I would pick from Chiefs. I would say Poppy Leach. Uh, yeah. I think she's the same. She's an incredible workhorse, is always everywhere. And she's very good with making decisions on the field. So very easy to, to like also improve almost your game improves when you play with her. So I think that would be a great pick good. as well. No, I like that. That was good. I like that. And good answers. Very close to home as well, which we love. Yeah. Well, I I, I really enjoy uh, playing with the girls at Chiefs. So I, I would definitely pick them first over other incredible players, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Chiefs fan, so you could pack old Chiefs if you want. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And we've got we've got one more question before we go into a different part of the show. It's just, have you got any advice for young women wanting to get into rugby? Uh, yes, like I think I mentioned it a little bit before. I think what's just important is that uh, if you keep working, um, like working on yourself, there's always. I think it's always important that you look at yourself first rather than if something goes wrong because you're playing with a team, you're looking at mistakes other teammates make. Most of the time, there's also something you can improve as an individual. And that if you keep working really hard, that in the end, it will pay off. Like if I look at my my career in France was maybe like some people would say that like I went there and I basically failed. But I think in the end, at the time, it definitely felt like that. But in the end, it paid off because I kept working hard and it also doesn't matter where you come from. Like I'm from a very small country with has a very um, a very small rugby country, but like because I kept just trying and and uh, 
I guess, uh, how do you say that? Um, Persevere. Yeah, they're like that you get out your comfort zone. Yeah. That things could pay off if you just just go for it and work really hard. I love that. Probably the best advice we've been given on this show. I like that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to go into something different now. So this is getting to know Wendell. This is definitely about you as a as a person, not not so much on the rugby field. Okay. So, what is your favorite post match drink? We don't mean water or protein shake. Like, what's your social drink? Is the best oh, way. My I social drink. I love a gin and tonic. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Any certain gin, or does it just just a dry gin or um a dry gin preferably no cucumber in it that's very important that any ice? sorry any ice i know that's a weird something yes do. but that, i hate it when people put like the whole bowl full of ice so that you get a brain freeze so it's just like a little bit <laughs> a few ice cubes no cucumber there you go yes <laughs> cats or dogs dogs I love cats as well. Don't get me wrong. I like any animals really other than insects, but uh, I love dogs. Fair enough. That's, I'm, I don't know why I keep this in. Nobody says cats. Nobody actually picks cats. It's always dogs. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I feel like a cat is great, but like a dog sort of needs you more. So I feel like you just get a better bond. You create a better bond with them. Yeah. Plus... Cats don't like me, so the feeling oh. then the feel the feeling then goes mutual. I'm not a big cat person because they don't like me, but dogs like me, so I like dogs. So <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. Um, what's your favorite film? Um, my favorite movie is Love Actually. Um, it's because me and my family watch it basically every Christmas. It's tradition. We basically watch it. And even on other times, we'll be like, oh, we've never watched that before. Whilst everybody in the family can say every sentence. And that's not even just my parents and my sisters. Even my aunts watch it from my mom's side every Christmas as well. So it's a family thing, I guess. <laughs> so I'm guessing you you can do the Hugh Grant dance scene. Oh. <laughs> I'm, home then. I'm, be- I'm guessing you know that. <laughs> I know the dance scene. Yes, I know the the move but <laughs> I don't think I should be doing it <laughs> I mean you could do it if you want we won't judge <laughs> that's a good film I got made to watch it last year but I quite enjoyed it it's not what I expected so that's for me that <laughs> um, what is your favourite song or your music genre Oh, I don't really have like a music genre that I just like listen to. I do like it really depends on my mood or something or like the, I guess, setting like if I'm going to a game or like if I'm I just woken up, it's very different. Um, favorite song. I don't know. That's difficult. I do listen a lot of 660, like the New Zealand band. I've been to them live uh twice now or twice twice two three times so i i would say maybe them a song from them i will always listen to nice i like that that's a, again another different answer i love this <laughs> would you rather be too cold or too hot too cold i yeah. hate being too hot i read and i feel like with if you're too cold you can put on more clothes so you're comfortable when you're too hot you can't like take off more because at some point you're just always going to be uncomfortable. That's fair. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. Um, what is your favorite? I say style of food, but it's like food cuisine. Like, oh yeah, my cuisine. My favorite is uh, Italian food. I love. I basically, if we don't get food from Chiefs, I'm pretty much making a pasta every night. <laughs> love that. The thing is, there's so many pastas you can yeah. make. You can't go wrong. Yeah, and you can also can't really mess up. Like, if you mess up a pasta, you're a pretty bad chef. Like, so I feel like I'm not the greatest chef, so I can make pastas at least. <laughs> you're just boiling. It's just, you're just boiling it. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> not hard. If you mess up boiling pasta, don't do it. Don't make. Don't make anything. Don't touch anything. <laughs> yeah. So, what's your favorite pasta dish? Oh, I'm loving. Um, so we have this pasta that it's like with a tagliatelle and then with a gorgonzola, creme fraiche, 
bacon, what is it? Pine nuts and spinach. Oh, and mushrooms I normally put in. That's oh, what man. I, that's one of my favorite ones at the moment. I like that. That sounds, sounds quite filling as well. Lots yeah, of it's good. In Love it. <laughs> um, what's your favorite pizza topping? Pepperoni. A pepperoni yes. pizza. Can be, Definitely. yeah. <laughs> Does pineapple belong on pizza? Oh, I find it difficult because, like, I I am a person that eats pineapple on a pizza, but I know people oh. will say, like, that it's not okay. But, <laughs> like, I wouldn't put pineapple on a pepperoni pizza. But, like, if you have a ham and, and pineapple, I mean, it goes with each other. So I would eat that, yeah. No, you're doing so well there. That's <laughs> 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 fine. Um, what are your hobbies away from rugby? Um, I love... Um, going to the beach <laughs> people that follow me on instagram they will know this because i basically post a picture that i'm at the beach almost every day but i love going to the beach and just um yeah walking around i am from close to the beach in the netherlands so it just feels a bit like home and i love to go sightseeing uh just seeing like architecture things or going for a sunrise or a sunset um so yeah that's uh i started this summer my I drive a white mini and her name is Helga so I started these small reels that I call holidays with Helga and it's more like me with some of my roommates that we go sightseeing and we call them holidays with her and uh, yeah so I love to do that in my in my spare time I love the fact that you've named your car I love that. <laughs> it's my first ever car. I'm 27 and I'm from the Netherlands, so I only own the bike so far. But mm -hmm. when I moved here, I had to buy a well, it was way more convenient to have a car. So it's my first ever car. So I have a very special bond with her. <laughs> I love that. Um, I have wrote this down because I feel like I can only ask you this. I can't ask every guest this. Oh my gosh. What's your favorite style of building? And I know that makes sense to you. I <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me, but we're going to ask anyway. I love a building uh, that is like, um, I hope this answers your question, but I love a building that is more like an older building, but it has been transferred into a more modern type, but then didn't lose like certain special uh, aspects from like the older bit of building. Because sometimes you see older buildings, they just get removed and then they just put a whole new modern thing there or they modernize it but then they sort of like it doesn't fit with the surroundings or they lose the whole aspect of what the building used to have i hope that answers your question I get, yeah i get what you're saying you like so it's like i'm trying to think if i could save myself here um so like a, an old building but not yeah. don't make it like a bank or or anything because it looks naff or do you like or do you know what i mean I think you know, I know what you mean. <laughs> you, know, like town, you know, like in a town centre that has like historical old buildings. Yeah. They've been re they're now renovated. So you've got the old historical like out, outside, but you go yeah. in and it's like a supermarket. Pretty different. Or, yeah. or a bank or something like that. It just doesn't look Yeah, or when like you have like an old building and they want to make it a bit bigger, so they make an extension to it. But then the extension is like designed like, very modern like almost a villa but you still have the old building so i feel yeah. like even if you extend that you want to have like certain aspects of it coming back so it it stays like it's okay. yeah i get i do get you i understand so I'm yeah good. okay <laughs> it was a good answer i like that um is there anything you're currently binge watching on netflix or is there anything you recommend for us to watch on netflix Ooh, at the moment what are we watching with the house well at the moment we're we started these on Wednesdays we have family dinner uh in my house and I live with uh Ailey Laura and Nick Friday so all uh, Chiefs players as well and we started the Christmas Netflix movies and we're trying to find which one <laughs> is uh the worst one and we watched a really bad one a few days ago. I actually, uh, it was me or something it's called. But I heard from Rachel that apparently there's a documentary about like the FIFA on Netflix. Um, yeah, and I that sounded really interesting. So I think I'm going to be watching that. But I also am not the greatest person for Netflix shows because I do love to watch like Love Island, 
those types of very no, bad shows. No, <laughs> yes. No. No. Too hot to handle that type of stuff. Not good or love is blind. Not great, but I do love to watch it. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think you want any advice from me. <laughs> Although there, there was a reality TV show I started watching. Just it came out of sheer boredom and I got me hooked. And I shouldn't I shouldn't because it's so rubbish, but it's entertaining as well. Yeah, it's, it's just entertaining and it's just like you can put it on on the background. I don't have to watch every second of the show. Yeah. I can just like not watch for 20 minutes and then I still understand what's going on. Sometimes a show like that's just yeah, yeah, yeah easy. <laughs> Mine mine's was the what's it called? Married at first sight, but the Australian oh, one. Oh yeah. That, oh yeah. That shouldn't be a tell that shouldn't be on TV. <laughs> I don't understand it. And it was like I think we missed half the season. We just happened to catch like one of the <laughs> final episodes. So like it takes you right back and then they get married and then like they pull you apart and you want your initial thoughts on who you've just married and the guy's like oh, i wouldn't have picked her i'm like oh my god like, <laughs> why why would you say yeah. that yeah and oh it's so much drama that's just or my comfort is gordon ramsay's hell's kitchen oh yeah if yeah. you're having a bad day just watch gordon ramsay shout at other people <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell the house that we can do that. <laughs> Not even the whole episode, just like there's like compilation videos on YouTube, and it's just like <laughs> half an hour of him just berating people, and uh, I feel better already. Then after that, <laughs> <laughs> um, who is your toughest opponent? It could be a player or a team or both. Um, toughest opponent. I think in the Prem now, a team picking a team would be difficult because there are quite a lot of um, uh, players uh, or teams that are performing really well. And I think that's also interesting about the Prem, like that it's a chance for everybody. Like you don't think already from the start of the season, one, one team is playing really well. So opponents... Um, that's difficult because there are quite a few but I would say I think probably playing against Saracens and then I guess like uh, Marty Pecker would be quite difficult is a difficult player to play against um yeah probably she's just over the ball so quick and um yeah always everywhere yeah (laughs) yeah and understands the game very well. So I guess I would pick her. And I, yeah, Saris is a difficult team to play against. So, yeah. No, good answer. Do you have any tattoos? No, I don't have any tattoos, actually. I really, I do want one, but um, I think I personally like it when it has a, has a, um, a meaning for yes. something. So I have an idea, but I'm, I, um, don't have it yet and i'm gonna wait for it for before i fair enough you, can you tell us what it is or are you gonna keep it a secret uh it's secret for now when it comes out i'll let you know <laughs> um would you rather so regardless of what you choose you're you're guaranteed to win the game would you rather score the winning try or get a one a winning turnover Ooh, <laughs> that's difficult I know. I like it. I like these questions. A scoring a winning try. I feel like I would rather. I mean, you would like to do both or either or, but a winning turnover might also be like. Mm. I don't know. I don't know why, but I'm I'm leaning more towards that because I feel like I mean it depends on what kind of try you score because like. Like coast to coast, like full full goal. Under the sticks, nice dive for the... Everything. Yeah, I mean, that is great. I would go for the winning try, I guess. <laughs> yes. So if it was just like a push, like a malt, like a phase play, and you just pushed it over, would you rather go for the turnover? Uh, Well, no, I th- I rather... This is difficult. I don't I don't even know why I'm... <laughs> I don't even think that was the hardest question I've ever done, but... <laughs> yeah, this is a... Just like, I mean... <laughs> I mean, scoring a winning try is always great. So, yeah, 
yeah but I think like also if you have a winning turnover I feel like that's also sort of like all the defensive hard work then all comes together so I, I almost feel like that would be more an explosion of celebrating rather yeah. if there, that that, there, are both, there is no wrong answer no I know but I I like to do both <laughs> I don't want to make it decision. I think I'm gonna go for the turnover you know what just because you're a guest and you've been <laughs> so great and so honest I'm gonna I'm gonna make up a, a different rule for you okay and I'm gonna give you the sound. so you've tackled someone you've ripped the turnover and you run it in so you've got the turnover and you score the try oh That's wow yeah yeah that would be great <laughs> that's, that's how we'll do it um because it's coming up to christmas what would you like for christmas what's your what's on your christmas list um so actually we don't really celebrate christmas um in the netherlands so like i i don't ask for presents for christmas uh we just we have a dutch uh celebration that's called sinterklaas uh that we celebrate on the 5th of december okay. so we normally get presents then so uh but if i would say what i want for, i don't know what i want for christmas i didn't really ask for anything i think what i just want is to go home and spend time uh with my family because the last two years i wasn't able to go home because the first year because of covid and last year with covid it was very unsure if i was able to come back so i actually spent my last two christmases uh in the uk so yeah i think what i want is just um go home go home which i already booked my flight so i'm definitely going there home. You go. see christmas, christmas yeah. Is early, in a way. <laughs> yeah final final question for you today linda one thing you'd like to be remembered for um wow that's a it's a hard one that yeah <laughs> I I would like to be remembered for I don't know that maybe like um oh that's difficult um maybe like leaving the my the shirt that I wear even if that's for chiefs or for my national team or that I try to leave that in a better place and maybe that's um in the team that I that at least like when I'm around my teammates uh that I bring a bit of joy to them so that like even though in tougher times or in good times yeah that they can come to me or that we can celebrate even if it's tough that we are we stick together or something yeah no I like that that's good okay. <laughs> well I have to translate first so I get you. Sometimes it comes out wrong. <laughs> if I could speak Dutch, I would, but I can't. I could speak a little bit of German, but that's about it. And I know <laughs> somebody did say to me, like, oh, it's the same. It's definitely not the same. No, it's not. Like, I can understand German a little, but if they would speak quickly, I have no idea. <laughs> I kind of have to, I've kind of had to honor my, my grand's from Germany. So, ah, uh, okay. And I think she forgot I studied it. So she'd shout at me in German and I would respond. It's right. You know well, what I'm saying. Mm. <laughs> Can't get away with it for, with everyone, but yeah. But Linda, the book is now closed. You've answered every question. You've absolutely smashed it. And just, I can't thank you enough for agreeing to come on. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for the invite. Uh, it was great. Back. You're welcome back anytime. And remember, if we get another chief on, that you're given a start on them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll but, do my best. <laughs> we'll, we'll end on that. Um, thank you again for so coming on. All the best for the the season just started for the Premier 15. So all the best. I know who I'm writing on because you can check it by the, all the jerseys I've got up. And hopefully we see more rugby from the Netherlands as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. Well, this has been the final whistle with Wanda Helden. We'll see you next time.